What you have here now is a new breed of politicians who are going to fight for the people, who are going to fight for justice because you are the people with the power, not the politicians. You are the ones with power. And I want to give you back that power. With a long history of activism that dates back to her days as an undergraduate at the University of the West Indies, Hulsi Bagan has had a multifaceted career in business management, trade unionism, politics and social development. Growing up in the village community of Guayma in central Trinidad, Hulsi is no stranger to lobbying and working class issues. Well, I grew up in a small village called Waima. In those days, there was only one highway connecting the north to the south. It was the Princess Margaret Highway. And uh, that village really was an indentured village in the sense that most of the indentured laborers of that area had settled there. And it was really just of the Karani Swamp. And most of them had built that village by hand, by actually liter literally carrying mounds of dirt in their buckets and so on. And I grew up there with, uh, it was 14 of us actually, seven sons, seven daughters. I'm number 13. And for me, my childhood growing up in Waima was quite happy because I lived with my family. We were materially very poor. But because we were a family that lived together, worked together, and you know, all our pains and hurts and, and happiness we shared together. It was a very good foundation for me in growing up and understanding the value of relationships. The villagers of Guayma lobbied government for about 10 years to compensate and relocate residents who would have lost their homes as a result of the expansion of the Uriah Butler Highway. It was in this environment and out of this struggle that Hulsey's social activism was nurtured. What influenced me mainly really was my parents. You know, they were people who stood for really good human values. They believed a lot in honesty, integrity, being very outspoken, be caring for people, compassionate, loving your country, your community. So for me, my formative years really was, were influenced a lot by what they taught and how they lived their own life. They worked very hard and despite the fact of not having a lot of material things, they kept their life very simple and they focused on the simple things generally. And I think also I became very sensitive to the poor because I myself was, you know, we were materially poor. I say materially because from a, a human interest point of view, we were happy as a family. But yes, there were times when we didn't have food to eat. So I really understood a lot about the poor and I've kept my life as simple as I can. And throughout my life, I've been very sympathetic to the people who are poor and I feel that they are people who should be helped. One of 14 children, Pulsi saw education as a means to make a stronger contribution to her family and country. This led her to attaining a BSc in Management Studies and an MBA from the University of the West Indies. As she recalls, her entry into politics was simply another step in her life. The government at the time wanted to build a dual carriageway, which is now the Uriah Butler Highway. And they said they were going to remove the Weimar residents. They were under the mistaken impression, apparently, that these people were squatters. But really, they weren't squatters. They were people who owned those lands. And so we waged a, a 10-year battle with the then government to get just compensation and be relocated. And during that time, I met people like Mr. Basio Pandey and Mr. Lawrence Mirage, Mr. Winston Dukran. So those were people who were involved either in politics or in public life. And while at that time, I became involved with the trade union more formally, the All Trinidad Sugar and General Workers Trade Union. And I helped to establish the women's arm. And I also helped to set up the Heal Center which is the Center of Drug Prevention and Rehabilitation. There came a point when I became the Education and Research Officer 
for the union. And this all culminated at a time when there was a split in the NAR government and there was the formation of Club 88. So I was also involved in Club 88. And then naturally it all progressed into forming the United National Congress. So I was, in fact, the first public relations officer and the first executive of the United National Congress. So that was my entry into politics. But frankly speaking, I did not plan to enter into party politics at any time. It was just a natural progression from the work I was doing because I see politics not as holding a position in a parliament, but I see politics as serving people. A founding member of the United National Congress, Holsi Bagan sat on the opposition benches and served as the member of parliament for Shaguanas from 1992 to 1995. Dynamic, energetic and committed to representing her constituents, Holsi became well known as a fearless champion of people's rights in and out of parliament leading several protest demonstrations and using an activist and proactive approach, Holsey frequently made the news headlines. I really just wanted to be different and to really make parliament real and to make a connection between the parliament and the people. I didn't believe that it should be so removed because what I found is there was a degree of alienation between the parliamentary system, the parliament and the politicians and the average citizen out, out there who are living everyday life. Some of her active constituents recall their experiences of working with Hulsey. When Hulsey was the MD for Shavonis, um, I was the president of the Market Vendors Association and um, at that time the market was very, in a very dilapidated state and I thought it was very unfair for people to come to shop there in those conditions. and. Um, Together with her, we made representations to the, to the borough corporation. At that time, the mayor was Mr. Mulchen Sechen. He was very accommodating. We had meetings with him, and it was fruitful. And now we have a more, more than one, which took some years, but it did come to pass. But her representation, that is Hosey Barnes. I think one of the, the, the major things was that whatever representation she was making, she always sought to get the people, the constituents involved in that whatever delegation that was going to meet a minister or a minister was coming to meet, she always insisted that people from the village be part and parcel of that delegation. And I think that was very significant. So the grey head man phone Wade and Ram and ask them boys what's next? They say listen Monday, she breaking away this girl called Hulsey X. While Hulsey had the support of her constituents, her style of politics led to her expulsion from the United National Congress and she was relegated to the back benches of Parliament. I think the main challenge was fighting against a system that was very traditional. A system that maintained and perpetuated a way of thinking where we, there was a stereotype. Now, I don't mind a party line, but I believe when you're going to develop the party line or the position you're going to take on a particular bill, there ought to be proper discussions, debates, and there must be consensus. And so my greatest challenge was actually being able to conform to that thinking where I had to just, whatever position that was taken, even though I did not contribute or I did not perhaps support the, the concept, but I had to go along with it. I didn't like the idea also of adversarial politics where we have opposition and government. And so the country was supposed to be divided along those lines, opposition and government. I felt once we sit in the parliament and we are all there together, and we all representing our constituencies, that we ought to work together. And when elections time come, well, of course, we can go at each other. That's okay. That's part of the process. But in the actual running of the country and running of the parliament, I really believe that we should have had more collaboration. And while you have, as the opposition, you've got to point out the deficiencies in the bills and, and bring up your own recommendations and so on, I felt the opposition needed to do that and the government needed to listen. A firm believer in putting the people and the issues first, Holsey made another resounding statement when she voted with the government on the corporal punishment bill. While now there is a lot of crime in Trinidad and Tobago, there was a time in the 90s when crime really had started to show its ugly head. And the government of the day felt that 
they needed to be a little more tough on what's happening. And they were introducing an amendment, I believe, for the corporal, corporal punishment bill. And uh, the party to which I was attached at the time felt, well, we should go and just um, not vote against the amendment. And I know that at that time, there was such a big problem with crime in the country. People were crying out for help. There were so many issues surrounding crime. And I thought, why are we, you know, looking at this whole issue as if it's something to play a game with? And interestingly, I also felt that the position that the, the party was taking at the time, it was one that was based on the rights of the perpetrator. Now, I have no problem with the perpetrator having rights. But it was not being balanced with the rights of the victim. So I said, well, why are we seeking the rights of the perpetrator and not being sensitive to what's happening to the victims? We've got to have balance here. And I really don't support this position that we are taking. And of course, the party insisted that they have to do that. So when we went to the parliament, I said, you know, I've had enough of this. So I stood up and I said, I support the, the bill. And I explained why. And of course, that got me into plenty of trouble because I went against the party. Yeah, While still a member of parliament, Hosey and other concerned citizens formed the Movement for Unity and Progress. An advocate for affordable food prices, Hosey led an MUP campaign during which she fasted for seven days and nights on the steps of the parliament building. We were really petitioning the government to um, lower the prices on basic foods and to control, manage the prices on basic foods. And we went from marketplace to marketplace. And we were throughout the island, and we were able to get 20,000 signatures on that petition. And people were willing, people from all levels in society were willing to sign that petition because they felt it was a worthy cause. And it was to help the underprivileged to survive to get the food they needed. When the 1995 elections were held, Hulsey Bagan fought on an MUP ticket simply to reinforce her political philosophy. I didn't change who I was. One of the things I've made a commitment to myself about is that I will always try my best to be me. I'm not going to be somebody else. I'm not going to pretend to be anything that I'm not. So when I got involved in, in politics, in party politics, for me, it was important to serve people. It was important to, to deal with things in an honest, upfront way, to be frank about things, to tell things as they were. And so my entire value system that I had in my personal life and in my community life, I brought it into national life. And so quite often, I would get involved in activities and I would do things. For most people, it was strange, and so I became what they used to call me as a controversial MP and it, I was just simply being what an MP should be and when we sit in the parliament there is a card in front of us that says Shogunas or Polispe North or Laventil West it doesn't call a party name it doesn't even put our name so we are there to represent that part of the country and in my thinking I felt that as a member of parliament we are supposed to be familiar with all the issues affecting our constituency. And when we come into the parliament, we must talk at two levels. One, we must be able to deal with policy that affects the entire country. And secondly, we must be able to bring to the parliament issues affecting our constituents. A leader by example, Hulsi Bagan is committed to participatory politics. Because the people felt comfortable around her. They felt that if they had a problem, she will, she will show that she is part of, of, of their, their, their problem too. And she never just took it down in writing and, and a phone call back or forth. She was part and parcel of her constituency. And that was very comforting to the people in the, of that constituency. Her sincerity and her commitment, her compassion, and that she is so well balanced. I wanted to make this point because she's one of the few politicians that I know that is about, uh, has, that has both intellectual and emotional competencies. And that is a very rare quality in politicians. She's balanced and committed 
to the people that she served. Although she ceased being a member of parliament in 1995, Hulsi Bagan has remained in touch with national issues. Now an executive member of the Congress of the People, Hulsi is once more an active politician. Whether she's teaching business management, working with marginalized groups, or carrying out her responsibilities as clinical director of the New Life Ministries Drug Rehabilitation Center, she continues to be at the forefront of national development. Armed with weapons of truth, justice, integrity, and selfless service, Hulsi Bagan continues to be a passionate advocate for the people.